So check this out. This week we are filming tiny things. So this right now is actually Lawa's very popular probe lens. It's actually been out for a while and this is a great macro lens. So you could see small things and get right up against it, right? But Lawa has taken it to the next level and made some super micro at like, it's basically like a microscope from what I understand. So more hardcore than this. And speaking of filming with tiny things, thank you to today's sponsor, Insta360. They make a tiny camera so that's the theme of this video. Small things. Tiny things. Speaking of this small things, look, look, oh, small camera. What is that, the R50? R50, yeah. You're playing with that, you well, liking it? I, I'm digging it. That's pretty big compared to this compared tiny to that, camera. Yeah, I know, I know. Is Canon sponsoring this episode? No, I didn't no, think no, so. No, Get no, that no. the yeah. f*** out of here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start with the 10X because I think that's going to be the most manageable and we'll work our way up to the crazy 50X. But since this doesn't have a focus ring, you basically have to focus the camera by adjusting the height of it. So like this thing right here, it's a, a little rail slider designed for focusing. I see something. Oh, oh nope. you can kind of see it, it dipping there out it of is. focus right there. So Okay, there we go, there oh. we go, there's the face. That's what we're looking for, the eyeball. Whoa! Look at all those teeny tiny Hold little on, like scratches and notches. Just this 10X is way tighter than the probe lens. Yeah. So obviously because we can attach these lenses to these cameras, we can take a picture. Just a EF mount and it comes in RF, E mount, all the basic ones. Ooh, that's cool. Oh. That's really cool. More, more. Let's do more. Should we see what our sponsor's camera looks like oh, up sick. close? Oh, oh, is it the center of the lens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with this sturdy tripod, every time I touch it, you just see how much it shakes. And I believe when we go to the tighter lenses, it's gonna get even crazier. And the little speaker on the bottom, is not what I was expecting out of a speaker. It, it looks more rubbery. We're gonna go ahead and jump to the 35. Hello, hello. hello. You wanna see a mosquito that- We're looking at a mosquito. Mosquito spin. Ew. Yeah, the tail of a mosquito. Really? Yeah. Hairy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Let's take a look at the penny again at 35. Look at that, just all texture. It's so crazy that it's so close up that you can't even tell what it is. So the probe lens will basically make the penny fill up your frame, but the 35X will literally take one letter on the penny and fill up the entire frame. And we still haven't even touched the 50, which is one level beyond this even, which is uh, insanity. All right, so uh, Frank found a butterfly outside. It was already dead. What There's is the that? eye. That's the eye. That's the eye? Yeah, that's the eye. You know how in movies they have the insect view and it's just like a, a bunch, bunch of them? Of them. Yeah, that yeah. Like, like, I'm starting to think that's legit. Like, All right, next specimen. What is that? I don't know. It was on your kitchen table. Oh, that's that's so cool, that's cool. Oh, that looks oh. like an arrow. That looks like part of an egg roll right there. Oh, there's something, there's on, something it. on it. Are you freaking kidding Wait, me? Wait, what? Like, is it a parasite? There was something moving. Oh, it's right there. Oh, 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 my, oh gosh. my gosh. What is that? It's like a mite? There it is. Oh, whoa. Oh my gosh. <gasps> that's crazy. What? There's not a chance yeah, you can no, see that with your not eye. Even, not even. Not a chance. So you can see all kinds of bugs like this on just a, a 20. I'm gonna wash my hands right now. Do you think all the germaphobes, this is how it started? Probably. Here, put the napkin underneath the bottle. Like, I'm gonna sanitize all this sh All right, let's take a quick break from things that make you wanna throw up and just enjoy this beautiful sunset and enjoy this beautiful camera right here, Insta360 GO 3. It's so lightweight that it's really easy to rig onto different things and get interesting, unique, creative angles. Honestly, I love the hat clip because it's like the helmet mount, but you don't have to wear a helmet for it. You just clip it on your hat. And also, the beauty of the GO 3 is that the charging case is wirelessly connected to the camera. So you don't have to guess at what your framing looks like, right? You could just look at it and you know what your framing is. You could hit record and change the settings all from this case. Now, if you prefer to treat this more like an action camera, look at that flip up screen so you could vlog with it. And one of the features that's new on the GO 3 is that it actually has latches. So it's not just magnetically held on. And the case itself also latches the same way. So this will stick to anything that's magnetized. So then we could just get in the shot here. Hey, I found these cool little guys. It just has a sticky back, but it's a magnet. So I could stick it onto the side of the Super 73 here. Bam, back to vlog. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea, Carrie. And of course, when it comes to FPV drones, it's all about keeping it as lightweight as possible. The camera weighs only 35 grams, has built-in image stabilization, waterproof to 16 feet, and I do have a full video on this on the channel in case you're interested in learning more. So thanks so much to Insta360 for sponsoring this episode. Link's down there in the description if you're interested in a vlog cam, wearable cam, action cam, vlog cam, all that good stuff. And are we ready to go look at the microscope again? All right, we're doing a little upgrade to our setup here. So this is a 
lens tube slip ring. It just attaches on like that, holds it on tight. So basically, instead of mounting the camera up here, it is now mounting it down here, which definitely gives it more stability. And look at what we got off Amazon, some prepared biology microscope slides. So we're gonna start off by looking up a dog stomach secretary. What? I'm not too happy that we're looking at dog parts. Peta's all about it. She's excited to see it, aren't you, Peta? There it is. Oh, I think you'll probably want to look at this one. This is rabbit testes. This is a house bee mouth parts. These are some cool textures. Oh, oh. Ooh. This would be such a pretty photograph. Oh, human blood. <gasps> you can see the red, the blood cells. So basically there's a 10X, 20X, 35X, 50X. And I just attach that. And this part actually comes off. And after that, the objective lens goes up front. Yeah. She's your magnification. You put it on there. You put the silencer on there. Silencer, <laughs> yes. And this little piece right here is super important. This is just like a slider and all it does is just slide. Oh my for... God, that's so satisfying. This thing is like a necessity if you're going to try to focus with this because you don't actually have a focus ring. This is like a numerical aperture oh, right here, but you can't focus it. I see. So it's a 20 millimeter focus distance that's fixed. So we would use this slider to just get us to that perfect distance. So right here, see how everything kind of comes into focus. Oh, a whole new world, dude. A whole new world. Okay, so <laughs> my index finger is pretty cool. Look, wait, got... is that my hair or like a stranger's hair? I think it's your hair. You're like Spider-Man. Maybe you are Spider-Man. Oh gosh, I'm scared to look at my hands. Like your hands look beautiful compared to mine. You moisturize and do oh, all that all stuff. The, all the time. Look at my hand. Oh, dude, it I looks- I definitely like, need to moisturize. It looks like a salt or bed. <laughs> it looks like your finger went through like a wildfire. This is like that. <laughs> what's left over. Dude, you want to see my fingernail? You're bone dry. We're going to go to Sephora after this. <laughs> There's little ants on this tree. They keep crossing this area right here. Like this is like their little freeway. Here it comes. Oh, oh dang, that was so fast. It was like, whoosh, whoosh. I'm trying to figure out a good setup for just shooting on the ground. It's like a bug's life here. The aperture here isn't in f-stops. It's in NA numerical aperture and it's 0 0.15 to 0.5. I wonder if it works the same way as like a regular f-stop aperture on like these cameras to where we get more depth of field. So here's a photo taken wide open at 0.5 and now I'm going to close the lens down to 0.15. We definitely get a lot more depth of field. So this slider can move side to side and forward and back and this one I originally got for the camera but it didn't actually do that well when there's a payload on here. Yeah. It's just not as smooth. This one's definitely smoother and I'm sure there's much smoother ones out there if you're willing to pay more for it. And this is just the aperture light. I just put a diffusion thing on it. So it could just be a good little platform that we can slide around like this or we can also just use it as an underglow. You ready for my specimen? Sand. So we've been using the 10X. Let's check out 20X. And here we are at 35X. And finally, 50X. One grain of sand right there. Is that, is that salt on there? Tell us, marine biologist. I took one semester, guys. I'm not a really a marine <laughs> biologist. This looks exactly like your fingernails. <laughs> one of the things that's nice about mounting it right here by the objective lens is that all of these lenses have the same focus distance. So as we swap out the magnifications, we don't actually have to adjust much else. Sam, this is funny. The Go 3 on your face looks like your eye when you're leaning down. <laughs> this is the iPhone screen display. I wonder if you could see the individual pixels. Oh! Whoa, that's trippy. So for red, it's just the reds. So do you know about water bears? Yeah, they're really like microscopic organisms that are really resilient. They could handle really high temperatures, low temperatures, and even the vacuum of space. They say water bears like to live on moss. I'd be so happy if we could find a water bear. You're so excited for moss right now, bro. Water bears. You can see the texture coming in, but no moving little creatures in there. Oh! Nightmare fuel. I... <laughs> Wait, you can see his inside of his yeah. body. See that little dot in that water droplet? That's what we're looking at. You could see these guys with your naked eye, but I pulled him out of a... Oh, 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 he moved. <laughs> oh. Looks like a potato that breathes. That's you. Uh, what is... That little looks gross. Wait, is it eating something? It looks like it is. Or is that part of its mouth? <sighs> I don't know why I keep looking at this stuff with you. All right, we're gonna swap it out for something a little less uh, disturbing. Is that a ballpoint pen it right is. there? Oh, I'll look at that. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. snap. <gasps> you working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep getting it. Yeah, keep going. You got it to roll. 
What do you think of my new setup right here? This is the Free Fly Ember, so super slow motion. I mean, I like it because it's just like anything you see on the ground, you can look at pretty easily. And when we tried to film ants last time, you know how they were just like blasting boom, through boom, the frame? Boom, boom. So right now I have it at 809 frames per second. Oh, oh, that's so cool. Whoa. In my mind, this is how fast they're walking. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Right? But in real life, they're actually pretty fast. The depth of field is so shallow that we can have focus on their backs, but then their arms are out of frame on an amp. That's insane. So I wonder if I could go handheld like this and get some shots. Shit, try the it. There's a bee right there. Oh, dude, you're like right in there. On my screen, all I'm seeing is just a lot of flickering things, but hopefully inside of that footage, there's like little nuggets of bee. Here, the slow motion dampens out that shake. And also, you'll need to get something in perfect focus for like a split second, and you can stretch that out. Yeah, we definitely only got the spider for a bit. Oh, I see a knife. There's what Sam's beard looks like right there. Oh, look, that looks like a full on stick. Yeah, it, you know what, it looks like a chocolate sprinkle. But these are definitely lenses that it, it takes time to get familiar with and getting good at focusing it, knowing which magnification to use in what scenarios, how to get the subject to line up properly, how to light. Pricing on this set of lenses is 1500 US dollars for the whole set. So you definitely need to be into this like microscopic photography. Because if you're looking to just look at things close up, that Laowa probe lens is much more versatile. But if you need to get closer than that probe lens, then this will definitely get significantly closer to that. I feel like everything we look at could potentially be art. Yeah, I think like seeing just the ballpoint pen, I'm like, why do you want to see a ballpoint pen? But then when we saw it actually working, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> Watching their videos, it's like some of the stuff you can see is so cool. Oh, there's the water bear. Is that a water bear? Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. All right, so I went ahead and asked you guys on Instagram what you want to see with this microscope lenses. Let's see what you guys have to say. A sponge. All right, so we've got a fresh new sponge here and this is the yellow side. And that's interesting, you can check out the green side. Mm. Oh, what? I was not expecting to look like that. This is with the 20X. Kind of looks like seaweed. Everything looks kind of slimy under the microscope. But th this is dry, by the way. JP Photo Story says, a potato chip. We got Lay's and Cheetos. Again, it just looks kind of slimy. Next. It doesn't even look like a chip, but that's a Frito-Lay. JR Studio says, a sensor of a camera. Huh. Oh, interesting. We're definitely seeing some details. I think these are the individual pixels here. This is the 20X, but I feel like this would be actually interesting to look at even with the 50X. Sugar. I think we have some sugar. Ooh. It's pretty cool to be able to see every little crystal. Yeah. Can you help me find my eggplant? <laughs> my bank account. <laughs> eggplant. Hmm. Why does everyone want to see an eggplant? You are going to get so many dick jokes. <laughs> A banana peel. This is one of the few foods that we've looked at with this lens and it actually looks appetizing still. Like I would eat that, even though it's the peel, so I guess you don't want to eat that. How about the inside? Ooh, bananas are pretty. Drew Media says dog paws. Lots of votes for dog paw. Now that I'm way more familiar with this setup, I, I want to keep experimenting and looking at stuff. I feel like there's an unlimited number of things that's interesting to look at. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you to Insta360 once again for sponsoring this episode. If that action camera interests you, link down there in the description. Now also throw a link down there for these awesome little microscope lenses. Go, bye. And we're out. Ooh.